So this is um, another JW update number five for this year, and uh, the uh, announcement. There was some breaking news yesterday on JW.org. That's where they post the most recent updates, uh, news updates. The previous one they had uh, over 10 days ago, it was about the appointment of the two governing body uh, members. So everything that something, every time that something big happens in the organization, you will always find at the very top of JW.org or on their website, on their website online, um, this uh, section about news. And this time, of course, worldwide events have overtaken JW organization. And the breaking news is the earthquake in Turkey. And if you haven't opened, turned your television in the past three days, it has been, it has been everywhere, this news. It, ha it is a mega earthquake that uh, now is already accounting for the death of over 10,000 people with more than 30,000 people injured in Turkey. And uh, I've never seen in my lifetime... Uh, people running away from collapsing buildings um, while on camera. Uh, they were they had nowhere to hide. They were collapsing. Buildings were collapsing everywhere around them. It was a massive, massive earthquake uh, that has cost the life of so many people. And the news, the ghost tower has come out yesterday. Uh, it says on February the 6th, 2023, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit southern Turkey. Significant aftershocks have also been felt in the region. Preliminary uh, reports indicate that the majority of the brothers are well. I want to say brothers I mean an, an insignificant uh, section of the population. I think the um, Jehovah's Witnesses in Turkey are about 15,000 people in a population of 85 million. So that will make them uh, um, uh, in percentage uh, uh, 0.005% of the population. So it's a, it is really it is a negligible amount of people that are following the cult in Turkey. But nevertheless, and it sounds that most of these uh, brothers and sisters are in parts of Turkey where there is Christians popula Christian populations, right? So they say uh, uh, the majority of brothers are well. Uh, are there any brothers and sisters in these areas? I don't know. And the news item from JW.org carries on saying, however, an elderly sister in Adana, which was one of the uh, uh, cities that was uh, hit by the earthquake, and a brother in Adiyaman are still not accounted for. Two disaster relief committees have been appointed and are addressing the immediate needs for our brothers of our brothers and sisters. We pray that Jehovah continues to give our brothers calmness of heart as they comfort and support one another. Isaiah uh, 30, 15. So that is the news item as it came out as breaking news from the Watchtower only in the past few days. And this is not the first time that the Watchtower has been dealing with earthquakes. Uh, uh, earthquakes has been part of their um, What Jehovah's Witness Believe section on their website because it is a major aspect of the prophetic message. Uh, they believe that since 1914, the earthquakes have been increased around the world uh, because it is one of the signs of the end. And I will make the, the case here that since Jesus Christ never came back in 1914, and uh, the end is still ahead of us, right? Uh, we haven't seen anything like uh, an increase of earthquakes. Uh, interestingly, the past few months, uh, if you look, do your research, there has been increased activity of earthquakes everywhere around the Mediterranean, which I've never seen in my life before. I've seen earthquakes being in Italy or in Greece or in Turkey, but they are uh, they're not happening at the same time. This time, if you look back, there has been five different earthquakes uh, tremors in Malta, uh, which is very interesting because we should expect a major earthquake there. There have been earthquakes in Greece and there have been earthquakes now in Turkey. So it looks like the whole Mediterranean is now under uh, the same danger of, of earthquakes. Are we seeing slowly the uh, increase of earthquakes around the world as part of the actual sign of the time of the end? It might be. We still have to wait and see. Um, 
and we have to look around the world whether these earthquakes are fulfilling Jesus' sign. So this is the article they had some time ago about earthquakes, which I find it very interesting. So it looks like while I was doing this uh, video on breaking news, the uh, I've updated their website again by now having a first uh, page article on the um, on the actual earthquake. So it is now an article. There is now an article on on the earthquakes on under the uh, section of keep on the walls, which, as I said, it includes articles about uh, how recent events fit in with Bible prophecy. And it says, keep on the words, devastating earthquakes strike Turkey and Syria. What does the Bible say? So I don't even have to go back to the old articles on earthquakes. This is the brand new article. It was just produced just now while I was doing the video. And when we click this uh, section, find out, uh, you see the devastation in Turkey and the buildings that have collapsed, some part of the buildings. And under the section, devastating earthquakes strike Turkey and Syria, what does the Bible say? They say on Monday, February the 6th, 2023, devastating earthquakes struck Turkey and Syria. A huge earthquake killed more than 3,700 people. Now, as far as I know, it's up to 10,000 people. Uh, across a swathe of Turkey and northwest Syria on Monday, with freezing winter weather adding to the plight of the thousand left injured or homeless and hampering efforts to find survivors. It is in a very difficult part of, of Turkey for uh, rescue teams to, to, uh, to reach. Even the Turkish government finds, finds it difficult to reach this area. So there have been, as far as I know, about 76 countries now. They're sending in help to uh, rescuers uh, to help with the uh, um, rescuing all the people who are under these buildings and they're still looking to um, uh, survive. Now, back in the article, our hearts ache when we read of such tragedies. At times like this, we can look to Jehovah, who is the God of all comfort. He provides comfort from the scriptures, scriptures that we might have hope to. Uh, and quote uh, Romans 15.4. Now, in the Bible, we learn what was foretold about earthquakes, where can we find comfort and hope, how God will eliminate all suffering. To find out what the Bible says about these topics, read, this, uh, read the articles, Great Earthquakes, what uh, did the Bible prophesy? So when we uh, click on this um, <clears throat> article, what did the Bible prophesy about great earthquakes? And this earthquake in Turkey, it is one of the biggest earthquakes in a, in a generation. The, the last great earthquake they had, it was 84 years ago. So we haven't seen an earthquake like this one in this area for 84 years. And it has been felt in so many countries around it. So don't, don't think it's small term. This is massive, even for the area. Uh, each year, they say in this article, tens of thousands of earthquakes occur. While most are minor, significant earthquakes can cause widespread destruction, suffering and death. At times, they generate tsunamis uh, that devastate coastal areas, taking the lives of many who live there. Did the, did the Bible foretell these great earthquakes? By the way, Italy has warned their citizens not to go to any of the coastlines in fear of a tsunami. Is that big? This earthquake can generate this kind of tsunamis. Uh, it says, in this article, we find out, did the Bible prophesy earthquakes? And that's the part we really care about. Did the Bible prophesy earthquakes? The Bible mentions earthquakes in a prophecy that Jesus gave. His words are recorded in three uh, Bible books as follows. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be there will be food shortages and earthquakes in one place after another. Okay, so it is one of these four signs that we have to see before the actual time of the end begins. As I have already told told you in many other previous videos, the pre the the uh, time of the end is seven years, with three and a half years being the great tribulation. Where do I base this explanation? Like every other Bible scholar today believes, it is based on Daniel chapter 9. Go and read it. The last few verses in Daniel chapter 9 speaks about the last week. 
the last week that we'll see, week of years, that we'll see the end days. The last three and a half years of this week is the Great Tribulation. Now, there's four signs before that. And which are the signs? Uh, if you go in the book of Revelation, it's the four, the four horsemen. You have pestilence, you have famine, you have death, right? And you have also added here from Jesus Christ earthquakes. Uh, so have we seen pestilence in recent years? I think we have. What do you think that last pandemic was? Will we see more pandemics? Very much likely if this is the end. And if this is the end and earthquakes now taking place in a far greater scale, then you put all the signs together and you have one composite sign that fits, that fits the Bible prophecy accurately. Now, uh, as I said, Matthew 24, 7 was the one time that Jesus spoke about the sign. Now, Mark wrote about the same account in these words. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in one place after another. There will also be food shortages. Have we seen food shortages? We have seen food shortages. It's this manufactured food shortages we witness. The food supplies, uh, food chains have been dis uh, disrupted because of the pandemic. Uh, sectors of the economy that support uh, the food supplies, the food chains have been affected. Countries that produce most of the world's uh, supplies in food are currently in war, like in Ukraine. So do we see manufacture food shortages? I think we see, we, we do. And the increase in the prices of all uh, the food that we, even in, you go to a supermarket and everything has doubled in the past year. Does that look like a manufactured food shortage? I think it does. Now, back in the article, there would be great earthquakes and in one place after another, shortages and pestilences, food shortages and pestilences. So have this in mind, earthquakes, food shortages and pestilences. And three are out of the four uh, uh, gospel writers, they included this verse from Jesus Christ in the gospel. So it must be very important. Uh, Jesus thus foretold that great earthquakes would occur in one place after another. At a time when wars, food shortages and pestilences would also be taking place. Together, these events identify a period in human history called the conclusion of the system of things or the last days. According to Bible chronology, the last days began in 1914 and have not ended yet. And that was, that's what the problem begins with Jehovah's Witnesses. They believe that this fictitious uh, starting time in 1914 that, has now, that is now over 100 years ago they, they, let, they said that Jesus Christ has been reigning for over 100 years. Really? <laughs> really? Has been reigning for over 100 years? So, do today's earthquakes fulfill Bible prophecy? Yes, Jesus' prophecy, including uh, what he said about earthquakes, matches the events we see taking place in our day. Since 1914, there have been more than 1,950 significant uh, earthquakes, which have resulted in a combined death toll of more than 2 million people. Consider a few examples from, the, uh, from this century. So they go through all these examples. I won't read them to you. You can go read the article yourself if you want. Um, and the last subtitle of this article, it says, what does the Bible prophesy about earthquakes uh, means for us? The Bible prophecy about earthquakes alerts us to what will take place in the near future. Jesus said, said, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. The Bible explains that the kingdom of God is a real government in heaven with Jesus Christ as king. This kingdom is the one that Jesus taught his followers to pray. When God's kingdom rules over the earth, God will prevent natural disasters, including earthquakes, from harming people. What's more, he will undo the physical and emotional harm caused by today's earthquakes. Not much of an answer, to be honest with you. When, they, in, when it comes to prophecy, they point to you towards the right direction. They quote you the verses. And then they go to 1914 and they make uh, a false statement about the earthquakes. Jesus Christ never came back in 1914. We haven't seen, we haven't seen anything like the earthquakes were, that you know he prophesied. We're going to see a far greater increase of earthquakes 
if this is the end. And if you do your study and you read in the book of Revelation, it talks also about the great earthquake that will take place during uh, the last years of the system of things. So uh, that is the take of the Watchtower. That is the recent article that just came out on Keep on the Watch. And as I said uh, previously, when I do my uh, Wednesday videos on, you know, current use of the Watchtower, I will be including at the end of it some of the comments I have received in the week in my videos which drew my attention. And this week I have a gentleman who left a comment. He looks like he's an atheist and he doesn't believe in resurrection. And this, this, this is the exchange I had with him uh, the past few days. Unfortunately, after the exchange, for whatever reason, he deleted all the comments. I do understand many people uh, that are watching my videos. They probably live in a household with other Jehovah's Witnesses or other Jehovah's Witnesses in their household are using the same computer or laptop and therefore they find it difficult to give a conversation uh, secret that they're having on YouTube or any other social media. Um, one thing about YouTube, people cannot tell who you are because most of the time people are uh, commenting with an alias, with a you know, uh, another name. So this is the comments and this is the exchange we had. So this, this conversation, this discussion in the comment section was about resurrection. And I know that most people who are not Christians, they don't believe in resurrection. Or I'd say most people, most atheists do not believe in resurrection. The thing is just, something that people made up or, you know, concorded. I do understand that. I do understand the concept. And uh, I find these people very brave to have their own opinion. They don't need to, especially XJWs who have left the Woods Tower, I've, and they have followed a different route. I followed the route of being a Christian. Others followed a different route, and they became atheist, agnostic, or what have you. I find these people very brave because they they get out there and they have their own opinion about things, and they try to... Um, uh, and, you know, uh, make a case out of this opinion. So this gentleman says all resurrections are fictional. So teach what, whichever one you want and be just as wrong as everyone else. So my reply was interesting. Why do you think that is? So uh, he comes back and says resurrections happen exclusively in stories. Am I completely justified in saying, therefore, they're all fictional? Probably not. Am I correct, though? Probably. So, <clears throat> if he thinks this is just a story, uh, the account of Jesus Christ uh, being resurrected. Um, so, I reply, no one today can prove whether Jesus was resurrected from the dead or not. Unless you have a time machine, that is, whatever the truth actually was, the disciples anyway passionately believed it was true they were not only passionate about what they were claiming but they were enormously enormously brave they traveled vast distances faced tremendous opposition and proclaimed with great vigor that christ had has been raised from the dead they were irrepressible and many of them paid for for it with their lives now not now lies turn men into cowards and not heroes. What I'm basically what I'm trying to say is when you know something to be a lie, you don't give your life for it. But this all these men gave the life for what they believed to have seen, right? They saw the resurrected Christ. So he comes back with the following comment. Uh, JW updates you could say the same thing about the guys who flew planes into the buildings in New York, traveled long distances, distance, tremendously brave, irrepressible, proclaimed that Allah is great, paid for it with their lives. Anyone can do that and still be wrong. This is correct. This is absolutely right. Many people can believe anything. They can be passionately believing, uh, having a, like a political ideology like this, people who flew the planes uh, in the Twin Towers and follow exactly the same route like the disciples of Christ did. They can do exactly the same thing and they can live their lives, give their lives for it. So I replied, 
correct? People sacrifice their lives for things they believe to be true, but do not know to be true. If the first disciples knew Jesus was not resurrected from the dead, then they gave their lives for something that was a lie. Liars make poor martyrs, right? You can't possibly believe uh, something hasn't happened. I mean, can you imagine the, the disciples going back to, on, on in the tomb, finding the beaten up Jesus, because he was really tortured to death, finding his body, then bury his body, and then go out and give the lives for, for uh, a lie. That's not possible. And I've got a personal experience on that. And the experience is this. When I was growing up, I was doing, uh, because I'm Greek, I was doing after-school studies in English. I was learning the English language as something, an extracurriculum activity outside school. And my uh, teacher, the English teacher, who was an English, a Greek uh, man who knew English, and he, was, he had taken uh, lessons in advance. So he used to be, he used to be a communist, okay? And people, some people don't know that immediately after the Second World War, there was a civil war in Greece between the communist, the communist fac, uh, factions and the, uh, well, democratic elected government. It was more likely a government imposed by the uh, superpowers because they didn't want Greece basically to become another communist country like so many, many other countries were becoming. So all the captured communists were sent to an island called Macronisos, which is off the, the coast of Athens. And they were tortured there for years. I think he was there, there for about six to eight years being tortured for his faith, for his belief that the communist communism is the only ideology that can turn the world around. Fast forward 40 years later, having seen the light and what you know these people look like and what does communism looks like in Russia, we had a private conversation after school and he said, I would never have given my the best years of my life being tortured in that island because everything I knew about communism it was just a theory. In practice, it doesn't work. So you see, in, in reality, I'm talking about real people. Real people not wanting to give their life for something which is a lie. And I've got another personal, far more personal experience. As uh, you know, if you go back a few videos, I've given my testimony, my personal life story uh, about me being a Jehovah's Witness. And part of this uh, my, of my life is that I served it for three years as a conscientious objector for the neutrality issue in Athens. I was in prison. Have I known then what I know now about the organization? Would I have spent half a minute being in that prison? Hell no. Hell no. Liars make poor martyrs. Only people who have seen something supernatural. And they thought, wow, you know, Paul was a persecutor of Christians, right? And he persecuted them to their death, to the point when Jesus was manifest in front of him and he asked one of the Christians to go and see him. He said, no, I'm not going to go and see this man. He was a persecutor of Christians. And overnight he became the, the apostle to the nations that we know today. James, the brother of Christ, he ridiculed Jesus for most of his life. <laughs> they, they used to say, you know, this, this guy is crazy. The moment he saw the resurrected Christ, he became the cornerstone of uh, the uh, church in Jerusalem. So how did these people die after Jesus' death? Peter was crucified, Paul beheaded, James, the brother of Christ, stoned to death, Andrew crucified, Thomas pierced through with spears, of us, four soldiers and died, Matthew stabbed to death in Ethiopia, James, James of Alphys stoned and then clubbed to death in Syria, Matthias burned to death, Bartholomew tortured and executed in India. Do these men sound like bad liars or men who had a supernatural experience that changed their lives? I'll leave that with you. I think they saw something supernatural. And that's, that's why the, the, the tenet, the cornerstone of Christianity is that Jesus was resurrected. Paul said if Jesus was not resurrected, everything is for, for nothing. Then what's the point of believing if Jesus didn't come back from the dead? So... I just want to thank all these uh, atheist agnostic community of XJWs who still watch my videos, although I'm a Christian. They're brave souls and have their own opinions, and I really admire that. 
and sometimes I get exchange of this kind and I thank, I thank this guy for this exchange. Uh, so this is, this is coming to the end uh, of, of my video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please this, share this video with others. And I will be back on Friday night with the next installment of the God Star Study article that will be studied next week. Thanks for listening to me, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care for now. Bye.